Good afternoon. You're watching Up to Data, a news business chat show in which we discuss all things technology, digital transformation, and of course, data. Today, we have the chief e commerce officer of Shalhu Group, the largest retailer in the region, Ryan Dendroyan. Thanks so much for joining us, Ryan. Thank you for having me, Shruti. As a data officer, what did your title entail? It was really focused. Uh, on, on an overall mission of making data you know, work better for the group so that we could create value for our customers. And really that fell uh, into three distinct pillars. The first was organizing our data, ensuring uh, that it was the right quality and that the business understood uh, what we had. The second was then figuring out ways how we could make that data more valuable. You can imagine, for example, taking uh, different customer data sources and combining them in a way that allows us to have a proper omnichannel channel view of the customer yeah. and then thirdly ensuring that we could activate that data in the business and really make it useful through the use of analytics. Right. So I'm sure that task would have been a task for you. But the second part of it is because Shalhu Group is a massive conglomerate with 700 stores, 300 odd brands, uh, like you mentioned. So with with that scale of business, how is it that you trickle down all the data that you've received to all of these brands with diverse portfolios and make sure that the chiefs of all of these different brands can make sense of this data? So I think there's, there's probably two kind of key parts to the strategy, right? The, the first is about really aligning you know, ourselves and our, and our team, you know, with the actual business needs, mm -hmm. right? A trap, you know, especially from a data perspective that's easy to fall into is to yeah. say, oh, I see a problem. Let's go solve this problem. By the time you've solved it and are feeling very smug yeah. uh, about the whole situation, it actually turns out that it wasn't really a problem that the business was facing. So, you know, we started by, by, by trying to understand what are the real pain points in a business, you know, so that when we come up with a solution, we know it's going to be adopted. The second was then from an operating model perspective to organize ourselves in a way uh, where we partnered really closely with the business. Right. So, you know, maybe uh, some of this data, you know, conjures up a bunch of people, you know, sitting uh, in a basement uh, somewhere, sweating alongside yeah. racks of computers, you know, couldn't be further from the truth, right? Like from the very beginning, you know, we sat alongside and worked with our commercial counterparts so that we could, uh, uh, you know, again, bring the business along on a journey uh, and, and at the same time, you know, help empower them to be users of whatever products we created. So it's not really geeks in a garage then, it's it's a cumulative effort is what you're saying. Great. Uh, so Shalhu Group again, uh, the whole digital transformation there started a couple of years ago, right? And then last year we had a conversation with Patrick Shalhu and then he said that, you know, this shocking announcement where he's going to close 60 stores so the resources could be allocated to the digital operations. And this happened before COVID-19 was announced as a pandemic. So it was shocking for us initially as, you know, as partners, as stakeholders in the business, but it did make sense a couple of months later when we saw the repercussions of the crisis we are in, right? So what was it? Did, did Patrick really have a crystal ball? Do you have a fortune teller in your offices? Or was it a data-driven decision where you figured out that, you know, the market trends are going towards digital? So I think you know there's 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 probably a little bit of both, right? I think any 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 great CEO and Patrick is definitely uh, one of one of those. You know, has to have you know an an instinct, right? They they have to have a nose for for what's what's happening uh, in 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 the world. Um, that said, at the same time, uh, I think there was obviously also a, a kind of commercial data driven uh, aspect of this decision where we observed that, uh, you know, customers' behaviors, you know, were shifting, right? right? I mean, digital channels are playing increasingly large part, uh, you know, even before the pandemic, as you, as you, as you, as you pointed out. Uh, and therefore, you know, we knew that we needed to evolve because at the end of the day, you know, our mission, you know, is to delight the customer, you know, like today for a lifetime. And that means understanding, you know, uh, deeply, you know, what channels uh, and kind of experiences to kind of create uh, to match those expectations. Absolutely. So you did speak about, you know, understanding your customers is key. And this is what everyone's been talking about. So considering you are a luxury retailer where where things like value of the brand, story of the brand, etc. is just so important, you can get personalization from data. But how do you make sure there's a personal connection to, which is what your customers would ideally be craving for, right? When you're associated with a brand like, you know, a high-end luxury brand without naming names, you, you want to be associated with the people behind the brand as well, not just numbers. 
Absolutely. I, I think, you know, you're, you're absolutely right that the, the pressure is definitely on when it comes to creating these data-driven experiences for luxury brands. Yeah. But I think the reality is this goes for any good, uh, you know, data capability. At the end of the day, you know, people don't, you know, relate to numbers. They relate to stories. Yeah. And so, you know, for us as well, you know, when, uh, you know, s trying to address these data challenges, we don't start with the data, right? We start, you know, with the customer. We start with their kind of journeys, their need states, mm -hmm. and understanding, you know, what does their experience currently look like, right? And where could data, you know, help uh, provide additional value, you know, reduce friction, provide a more rewarding uh, experience. Because at the end of the day, if we do our job uh, well, right, we're invisible. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the customer just walks out of the store, you know, or comes off the website or, or, or finished the order on the app and goes, wow, that was great. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, you know, you're right. It's, it's definitely a high bar for luxury when it comes to these experiences. But that element of, of customer centricity, that element of storytelling, I think matters to anyone in any sector. Right. So for you and your team to be invisible, like you've just mentioned, uh, obviously it requires investment. So let's talk about the conversations you might have had with your CFO, right? We are in a crisis. There is cash crunch. Uh, we've seen a lot of retailers, including including luxury retailers, struggling. So it would mean redistribution of resources uh, in some cases. So at that point, what kind of technologies uh, got priority when it comes to you know improving customer experience? Tough question, Shruti. Uh, so I think, you know, like, like all of us will have, have experienced over the past, you know, 12 months, you know, decisions have had to be made, right? Tough decisions have had to be uh, made just to, in terms of, you know, safeguarding, uh, you know, initially just the you know, business continuity of, of certain ventures, but also as we now start kind of coming out of, of, of this crisis, you know, identifying where, you know, we can kind of see the greatest return, be it on, be it in terms of finances or, or, or customer yeah. uh, experience and satisfaction on our investments. Now, I think, you know, uh, the foundation for, for the kind of conversations that, that, you know, I had, for example, with our CFO really has to be um, uh, you know, honesty, right? It has to be uh, uh, rooted in a kind of very clear understanding of what drives value now and drives value tomorrow. Yeah. Because I think there's no right answer and, and there's certainly no, uh, you know, one maxim that applies to every single business. So in our case, we, for example, said, okay, what are initiatives that we need to tackle right now? Yeah. Um, you can imagine, for example, that on the inventory front, uh, when all your stores are closed, you know, there, yeah, is a certain uh, uh, pressure that builds up in terms of inventory that's going unsold. So clearly, there's an opportunity there to say, okay, how do we maybe drive the sales uh, of particular uh, items? You know, that new seasons are coming in. Uh, you know, and how do we uh, just quickly alleviate some of this pressure? Yeah. At the same time, you know, investing in, for example, you know, uh, personalization and customer insights, you know, might you know, in the middle of, let's say, lockdown last year, not have felt like the most pressing problem. But now, you know, almost a year later, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing that pay huge dividends because we've invested in these capabilities that now allow us to, you know, engage and re-engage customers in a very kind of like natural, uh, personal manner that we yeah. would have had much more difficulty with had we not made those investments at a time. Honeywell Smart Talk, a unified communications platform that connects device-enabled employees allows team members to meet and communicate virtually. Right, so now that you've transitioned into your new role as an e-commerce officer, what I would like to know is from data being being an umbrella data role that you had earlier, now it's very niche and it's, it's for one particular segment, uh, which is again, a huge, huge, massive segment. So at this point, I would like to know about this, this whole omni world that we're living in and everybody's just been using and throwing around the word, but no one's really getting it right or, you know, or using it to its optimal potential, right? That's pretty much what's happening. But when it comes to collecting data from the stores, there are traditional ways of doing it, which is like we just discussed a little bit earlier, you know, you can collect the data, ask people to sign a document or, you know, give them an iPad. And then there are more personal ways of, of getting that data, right, with, with the conversations you have with the store staff, etc. But then how do you amalgamate the data that you get from the store on your e-commerce platform? And the second part of this would be that we've noticed over the years that there is a, a look, feel and a sense that stores have. And, and it's the brand value that they've carried for, for years, considering that's their legacy front. And then once they go on e-commerce, 
suddenly the whole language changes. You know, there's there's no parity. Suddenly, you're, you as a customer feel disconnected to both these platforms. You're not sure if it's the same brand, same retailer you're communicating with. How can you ensure that problem doesn't happen? <laughs> Such an easy question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> look, I, I mean, look, I think you, you raise you raise a number of, of good points, right? I mean, yeah. Firstly, I mean, Omni is definitely the new multi, right? If you're just multi-channel, yeah. you know, clearly, you know, that's not cool <laughs> enough, and, and and people want Omni. Yeah. You know, to your observation about you know, is anyone doing Omni-channel uh, really well? I think the reason it's such a challenge for brands is that Omni-channel, you know, isn't so much about you know deploying a certain technology or putting certain processes in place. It's really about being able to meet the customer's expectations, you know, you know, anytime, you know, any place. Uh, and that's a really high bar, right? So, you know, I very much see, see Omnichannel as, as a type of, you know, never ending journey where it's really about kind of listening to the customer, understanding what the key aspects are of the experience that they care about most and then making sure that we consistently are able to provide uh, those types of uh, uh, services or products or experiences. Sure. Now, you know, in terms of you know, in terms of the kind of potential disconnect between, let's say, the physical retail experience and, and the web experience or, or app experience, you know, I think this is, uh, you know, obviously a, a data problem, right? Where if, if there's, you know, certain data you've, 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 you've provided uh, uh, in, in one platform, you want to see it reflected in another, et cetera. Yeah. But uh, you know, f I think primarily it's a customer experience problem, right? In, in you know, in developing these kind of store concepts, there is an inordinate amount of, of of effort, right? And a lot of brilliant thinking that goes into designing the perfect type of experience, making sure that everything from the way that the products are laid out to the way that the lighting yeah. works. In certain cases, like level shoes, even you know, creating bespoke scents uh, uh, for the store, right? Yeah, so that you yeah. truly have that forget omni-channel, omni-sensory yeah, uh, yeah. experience. Um, and then, you know, sometimes when you when you talk to people working in digital, they go, yeah, okay, we, we built this website and has these features and it, you know, uses all kinds of cool JavaScript. Yeah. And you're like, okay, cool, but but where's like the the, the magic, right? Yeah, Which is exactly. like, you know, all all this all this kind of like you know stuff beyond the the, the real estate, the right? Beyond be the technology. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, I don't think that this is 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 necessarily a difficult problem to challenge because I think the reality is it's just about brands taking the same mindset and, and love and care that goes into creating these more traditional retail experiences and 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 ensuring that they take the same level of care, uh, you know, on uh, you know on their digital channels. Yeah. Um, and 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 the final thing I'll say on this is, of course, why I think it's sometimes easy to make these uh, uh, you know mistakes is that. You know, if you walk into a store and the store sucks, mm -hmm. I mean, you know pretty quickly, right? Yeah. It's like, well, hang on a second, it smells terrible yeah. and there's a burst pipe, you know, and that person in the corner is just, you know, playing on the phone <laughs> instead of like helping customers. You know it's bad. Yeah. But I can probably give you, you know, a, a, a you know, I know, a random app that from a you know has a terrible experience. And you know, you might install the app and you might not immediately realize it's a terrible right. experience yeah. until you try and check out, you yeah. know, until you maybe find try to find a gift for a friend, you know, until you're trying to figure out what the returns policy is. Yeah. And so there's definitely a, a certain proactiveness, I think, that's required to ensure that those uh, experiences really meet that standard. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you've tried to cover a lot of the points, but before that, I just wanted to ask you, I should have started with this though. <laughs> Do you agree that there is that problem of this disconnect between stores and e-commerce platforms of the same brand or retailer? I think, I mean, to be honest, I think when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the, the transformation of, of traditional uh, retailers into these kind of omni-channel retailers, I think there's, 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 there's a range of challenges. And I think this is absolutely, uh, absolutely one of them. Um, uh, but, but like I said, I think there's so many facets to getting that omnichannel experience right yeah. uh, that um, you know it requires taking a very kind of let's say holistic view and 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 not just thinking okay well I've solved this problem so we're probably good across the board you know yeah. it's really about zooming out and saying if I were a customer and I were trying to do this or 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 purchase that or uh, you know have this experience you know what would it feel like and are we getting all of the components uh, right Let's talk about one component then, you know, with location data. Globally, location data is being used, abused, misused, <laughs> all of that. But then over here, um, from the conversations I've had with retailers in, in the last few episodes, they've said that they aren't quite using location data optimally at this point. What is your take and how is Shaloop Group doing it and how would you imagine doing it going forward? 
Yeah, I mean, I think you raise a very important point, Shruti, which is that uh, of data, you know, security, right? And 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 ensuring that you know if you know, data is made available by by consumers, you know, to organizations that the data is handled with, uh, you know, respect. Now, I think there's another element uh, that matters when you're talking about using certain data, and that's the question of value exchange, yeah. right? Uh, it's really easy uh, as a developer, and I know because I used to code, to say, oh, I want this and this and this and this and this data from this customer. Yeah. You know, either when they install an app or they or they log into my website, etc. And then what? Well, I don't know. I've now requested all this data and it feels good because I've got all this data. Yeah. But of course, from a customer standpoint, that's very disappointing. Whereas if you are able to be much more considered in the type of data that you request and say, look, I'm asking for these specific things, but I promise you as a customer that you're going to have a really great experience because you know these three pieces of data will allow us to do A, B, and C, yeah. you're probably going to feel a lot more comfortable uh, when it comes to sharing the data. And so I think you know location data is 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 not dissimilar in that you know if we had a really great use case right now for for location data, uh, I would have zero hesitation to say you know what we're going to request location data from every customer who installs an app or yeah. comes to our website because we know that we can offer them a very clear value exchange, be very transparent about why we're collecting the data and how we're going to use it. Um, but the reality is that, that right now, you know, as far as location data goes and the related use cases go, they're not at the kind of top of, of my priority list uh, uh, right now. I mean, there's some obviously work that we're doing about using location data during the checkout process to say help find an address. Uh, but again, those are very specific uh, use cases where there's a clear value exchange. Sure. And the other side of things is uh, people as customers or consumers, they're not quite aware of where and how the data is being used. Sometimes just, you know, just to get things out of the way, we, we click on the allow. And I've done that so many times. Allow. Terms and conditions read, yeah, sure. Yeah. I've never read it. Not iTunes, exactly, yeah, like 24 pages, right? Yeah. Before it, yeah, I know. But that's probably you giving the company permission to use your data, right? And then that just happens, uh, it happens organically, but it doesn't happen really transparently, you know? It's, it's all in fine print, etc. So how do you like sort of navigate around that problem if, if you want to build that sort of relationship with the customer? Because one thing is, you know, we spoke about this earlier, there is... There is generic advertising that we see a lot, you know, across social media platforms. You know, advertising that that doesn't apply to me, and it's just annoying, and it's wasted advertising. There's again a lot of money going into all of those adverts. And on the other hand, I was telling you earlier, if I'm having a conversation with a friend about, you know, probably starting yoga or whatever, and then I go on Instagram and I see all of these uh, workout brands sending me recommendations. And that is also a little scary for me that I know that my phone is listening to every single conversation I have. So how do you draw that? There, there is a fine line. How do you, you know, sort of maintain the balance between the two? Absolutely. I think, you know, the balance you refer to, right, is really the question of what services, you know, do you want to offer and what's required from a data perspective to order those, uh, or offer those services, uh, you know, versus ensuring that you kind of respect the rights of the data holder and make sure that, 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 that people don't afterwards feel, feel, feel tricked. And uh, to your point about, you know, how, how do you solve this? Uh, you know, I think fundamentally, right, I mean, outside of kind of like regulations, this comes down to ethics, right? It, it comes back to the company's values. Yeah. Now, you know, one of our, one of our company's values, uh, you know, is respect. And so, you know, for, for, for us, when it comes to data, you know, we want to be incredibly respectful of a customer's data, yeah. right? Obviously, you know, we ask, you know, for maybe names, phone numbers, email addresses during the course uh, uh, of, 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 of the kind of like interactions. But there's very clear reasons that we identify why we need this, right? If, hey, if we don't have your address, we can't deliver your package. Like, yeah. hey, you know, if you, you know, don't give us a, a phone number or email address, you know, we can't recognize you later if you come back to the store, et cetera, and pull up your, for example, previous, uh, uh, you know, your, 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 your previous orders, et cetera. Um, I think, you know, the, the key thing to identify is that, that and, and this is my personal view, but that the onus for this is very much on the organization, right? Because I think particularly in the early days of, of you know, the internet, right, a decade ago, decade and a half ago, um, you know, people would say, oh, like, it, it's fine, you know, because the customer clicked agree. Yeah. To your point, you and I know that, that, that almost nobody reads agree, right? Like I said, I got halfway through, through iTunes back in the day, and I just, I couldn't, right? And, yeah. and I work in this space, right? So spare a thought for... For, for, for everybody else. Yeah. And so I think it's disingenuous to say, oh, well, you know, they clicked a button, so, so we're good. Instead, I think, you know, it's, it's about having that explicit consent 
uh, and, and, and being able to then own it as a company, right? To say, look, you know, we, we take responsibility for the fact that we've asked for this data. And we also take responsibility for the fact that we now need to safeguard this data. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think for me, Estonia's cloud government is is just apt the way they do everything and how there is this trust between the people and the government and, you know, the way they do it. If, if every brand, if every retailer, if every company can, you know, sort of follow that. And as customers, we can aware ourselves enough to, you know, to be more more educated and informed about the choices Absolutely. we make. That would be amazing. But Ryan, thanks so much for joining me here. And thanks for those valuable insights. I had a blast having this conversation with you. I've definitely learned so much. And thank you to all the viewers who've tuned in today. We will be back again with another episode of Up to Data very soon. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>